Hey everyone, it's Mr. Cates again. I am here this time to give you a mini lesson on the life cycle of a star. So far today, you've already read about the supernova seen in 1054, just about a thousand years ago from where we are today. You've also just watched a YouTube video on the life cycle, but did you know that there's actually two paths a star can take? Uh, probably not, and that's exactly why I'm here. So, all stars actually start off the same. So I want to show you this. It all starts as massive clouds of dust and gas, right? And then, as that happens, they start forming due to gravity. So when you think of gravity, some of you might think of the Earth and how Earth has gravity, and that keeps us grounded, right? So this big mass of dust and gas starts kind of forming together due to gravity, causing an increase in mass and temperature. So this is how every star is formed right at the beginning, and they turn into a protostar. And then eventually, as it starts to heat up and increase in temperature, uh, they can go in two different ways. And that is going to be dependent on the star's mass or its size. So the first path would be the average star. So this happens when the core of the star uh, has fusion going on. So that's something we're going to touch on a little bit after this. But there's fusion going on inside the star stars. And we can think of that as the fuel, the fuel for how the star shines. So in this site, it is burning hydrogen and helium. Uh, in this stage also, there's equilibrium going on. So that's why it's kind of a stable here it's in equilibrium, where the force of gravity going in and the pressure of the core from fusion going out is around the same, making it a stable star. But as the fuel inside of the core starts to burn up, that hydrogen and helium, it begins to grow because the pressure inside of the core starts pushing the outer layers out. So once it does that, it will grow very big, much bigger than its normal size, into a red giant. So this happens when all of that core is getting burnt, right? The fuel. So as that fuel is running out in the red giant, it continues to expand and expand until the force of gravity is weak enough that the outer layer actually goes out into space. So this is called a planetary nebula. So all of that outer layer of the red giant has escaped into space, leaving behind just a little dense core. And that core is called a white dwarf. It is the dead remnant. Remember remnant from the little article you read? Remnant core of the red giant. It is very dense and no fusion is is no longer going on. So there's no more fuel, so no more fusion. This is extremely hot at once it is formed. However, after billions and billions of years, this white dwarf will turn into a black dwarf and have no more light. Okay? So that is the first path. That is one of an average star. Next, we're going to look into the path of a massive star. So if you think of something as massive, it's really big, right? So the size of a massive star is going to be much bigger than that of an average star. So the massive star, just like the average star, though, is going to be in a state of equilibrium. So the, the pressure of the core inside where fusion is happening is the same as gravity of the outside pushing in. So different from a little bit different from the average star is this massive star. It can, bu can burn fuel that's a little bit different and we'll, we'll talk about that again later so it can go to a, a deeper stage and grow all the way to a red super giant so like the red giant the outer layers are getting pushed out and pushed out until finally this red super giant the core can no longer do fusion and what's going to happen is the this core and the rest of the star are going to start to collapse so you got this big star start to collapse right and what happens is it all kind of just bang explodes and what that is that is called a supernova so we read about this the supernova so what's happening here is it's a shock wave explosion which it kind of creates a super bright light right and it's leaving a, and what's happening in here is it's releasing all the particles of the star so what happens after a supernova is two things so it can become a neutron star so similar kind of to a white dwarf it's the leftover core and it's again the remnant of the supernova is a neutron star 
and this has a great mass and ejects particles into the interstellar medium. So mean, the particles meaning elements. So think of like the hydrogen, helium, it's ejecting that all into space. The second option for very massive stars, this is what usually happens for the biggest stars of all, is the creation of a black hole. So this happens when the collapse of the star creates the supernova. It creates such a force of gravity that it just starts sucking in everything around it, including light. So that is why it, there's called a black hole. It looks black because there's no light escaping this. So the question is, why, why learn about the life cycle of a star? Why is this important? Well, these events, the life cycle of a star leading to this, actually turns into everything in our universe. And something we'll talk about called the Big Bang. It releases all the elements that turned into everything in our universe, including us. So this here is a life cycle. And even though it's a star super far away, it eventually led to us.